Hello friends, thanks for joining us for a video about TriCaster TC1 or in fact TriCaster Mini if you are so lucky to own one of these systems. We'll not be looking at switching video in this video, we'll be looking at audio adjustment and to do that we have a great product at Skahoy. It's the Waveboard and the Waveboard has 8 motorized faders for each channel. It also has a display, it has four buttons so you can assign functionality like mute and auto follow video and whatnot for each channel and it even has a section of buttons where uh, function keys essentially five function keys where you can build in um, different bank selections and so on and we'll be looking at that for the TriCaster TC1 in this video. This is the waveboard it's connected to my network and on the network the TC1 is also connected so these are talking to each other and we also have um, the multi-viewer output of the TriCaster 1 recorded so you can follow what happens on screen as I'm using the uh, waveboard panel. My laptop will help us to um, understand certain things about configuration which we'll be looking at later but uh, for now we'll just actually close it down again because we don't need it right now but the laptop is connected with a USB cable because when we get to configuration we uh, need to load up a web interface to change things in the waveboard. Now let's first look at the product and and how it looks. So uh, here is the close-up of the waveboard panel and you can see that um, we have the faders here. We have also information about the inputs. So in the displays, this one says input number one, input two, input three, four, up to seven, master. So I assigned the menu section out here, F1, two, and up to four to different banks. So as I'm pressing two, you can see I now see uh, CG, that's actually input 8, 9, and up to input 14, then master. Th this one is always dedicated to master. And hey, let's just see what happens as I'm pulling this. Yes, you can see the master fader is, is going up and down. Okay, let's see what happens if I do like this. You can see that I'm adjusting the, s the sources of... Um, uh, yeah, the channels that has been assigned. And if I go back here, I want to highlight another thing. So... Um, so these were some of the, f the first inputs. Now, uh, notice the red and the green light we see right there. Those are tally indications. And those tally indications come from the TriCaster. You can see it in the TriCaster that input number three is on program and input number four is on preview. The other ones are basically toggling these sources on and off. So as I'm now pressing on uh, this button, you can see I'm toggling these on and off. This should be visible with a um, whether the uh, if if you see it's it's now off this source. I'll just turn it up. This one it's gray below the slider on the multi viewer, but when I'm turning it on, it becomes blue. Okay, so that's the basic functionality. And as I'm going to different banks, you see that they uh, bring the faders into different positions, and I also have those labels up there change. Now, um, let's go back to this view. If I press the upper button on the panel, it changes what you see in the display. So essentially now you see information on the full size of the display about the value of the, the audio um, fader. So this is at minus 10 dB, minus 8, minus 32, 12 dB, minus 18, and so forth by doing that. Great. All right, um, it's so much fun, isn't it? I love seeing that happening, yeah. Ah. Okay. Now, um, there's actually a feature on the waveboard which is really, really cool. And now we get into um, do not try this at home territory. We are at in a situation where we need to do more development work on this. We also need to work with um, either we need to work with new tech on it or we need to find a solution for ourselves. It is the VU metering. So the VU metering is that the waveboard has VU meters. So just next to the faders, there are great, uh, is it 10 or 11? Oh, 10, uh, 10 level RGB um, LEDs for VU metering. To use those, we need data from the TriCaster. And at this point in time, that data can be so overwhelming for the panel that it's struggling to keep up uh, getting that data over network from the TriCaster. 
That's the problem that you will discover with me now that we are diving into this. This is why it's not do it, you know, uh, do not try this at home territory at the moment. We are looking into solutions for it, but let's first see what we actually can do and how it looks. So um, the first thing I'll do is just turn down the, the, the sources a little bit uh, here so that we'll get a good start. And then we'll look over at the laptop because this is where we need to enable VU metering on the waveboard for the TriCaster so that we can see what's happening. So this connection over USB gives me um, a, a quick way, easy way to get to the online configuration for the waveboard panel I have connected. And when I get to this um, configuration, oh, by the way, this configuration is of course where you can um, see, uh, it, let's just pick this fader. You can see that it's adjusting audio volume in, f in uh, bank number one for input one, in bank two, it's input eight and so on. So th this will just give you a quick idea about how you know the configuration works now if i go to the media tab i'm now going to show you something which is really geeky but i promised you this is you know not uh not it's not family safe what we're doing right um i type in dc zero colon zero equals one and that code will unlock vu metering for this panel okay that's all you need to know for now, like that. And what I'm going to do then is check for updates in my firmware application, like that. And it's now fetching a new software version for the panel, which will enable VU metering. We are done. Awesome. Uh, yes, now we can see the, panels, the panel is, is, is exercising a little bit. Uh, if we open the serial monitor, we'll see connection to the TriCaster. It's connected. Things are great. Faders get into position. And yes, you see VU metering happening on these faders over there. That's the master volume. And here you see VU metering for input 15 and 16. And over at the auxiliary 1, 2 and 3, you see VU metering as well. Okay, so I promised you that this could provide problems for us. And um, so just to show you why this is um, uh, or can be critical, let's just try to turn up the volume for these. Okay, and I go here and I do this. So basically what happens is when it gets overloaded with data, then it can get into a situation like this, which doesn't really, um, you know, You'll, you'll see it right now. So I do like that. It does like that. It does like this. And this is what happens when we have data congestion on the network to the, to the uh, panel. This is what we need to solve because this is not usable in real life, as you will definitely agree with me. But it is really, um, it is something that we are going to work to solve. And the trick is the TriCaster um, will send you only the audio data. Uh, it will send you only the meter data if there is audio on input sources. So this is why we made it at this point in time, because if you do not have a lot of audio on your input sources, if only five sources has audio, no problem. But if you have audio on 20 sources, we have the congestion problem and you will have problems. So this is why it's available while we are finding a solution. You just need to know that this is something that will put constraints on the number of uh, or, or the yeah the number of channels that can have audio data in the TriCaster if you want your waveboard panel to be responsive uh, to uh, the general operation. So happy to bring this to you. Really exciting to enhance the TriCaster ecosystem with a audio fader panel. Mm -hmm.